In the world of genetic research, molecular cloning stands as a cornerstone technique. Molecular cloning is used to assemble recombinant DNA molecules and amplify them by replication within host cells. In this video, we explore how scientists manipulate DNA in the laboratory. Before embarking on the cloning journey, scientists must first identify the specific DNA fragment they wish to clone. This fragment could represent a gene of interest, a regulatory element such as a promoter region, or any other sequence that holds importance in their research. The first step is about generating the vector, also called backbone. In other words, the piece of DNA in which the sequence of interest should be inserted in a later step. A commonly used type of vector are small circular pieces of DNA naturally found in bacteria, known as plasmids. Common elements of the plasmid are an antibiotic resistance gene, an origin of replication which enables replication of the plasmid inside the bacterial cell, and a promoter region that can drive gene expression for the gene that will be pasted downstream of it. The backbone also contains different restriction sites. Specific DNA sites where the DNA can be cleaved later. Most restriction sites lie downstream of the promoter region. To manipulate or open DNA, scientists employ the use of restriction enzymes, often referred to as molecular scissors. These enzymes possess the remarkable ability to recognize a defined short DNA sequence, known as the restriction site, and cleave DNA at those precise locations. This enzymatic action generates fragments with sticky ends. These sticky ends serve as the glue that brings together different DNA fragments later. Once the backbone is generated, the second step is the insert generation. There are different ways to generate the DNA sequence of interest. For example, PCR amplification of a gene from a genomic DNA sample or purchasing a synthetic DNA fragment from a company. Once the insert is generated, it needs to be prepared before being pasted into the backbone. A classical way of doing so is with restriction digestion. Again, restriction enzymes can be used to generate the same overhangs as of the backbone. Now that insert and vector are cut, unfortunately one can't just throw the digestion mixtures together. Insert and backbone need to be isolated. On the other hand, the enzymes used to digest them, as well as any pieces cut out of them, need to be discarded. This can be done with gel purification. In gel purification, a voltage difference across the gel matrix, usually agarose, is used to pull negatively charged DNA through the gel. The digested DNA and undigested controls are loaded on the top of the gel in wells positioned towards the cathode. When the voltage is applied across the gel, the DNA migrates towards the anode. Larger fragments of linearized DNA migrate slower than smaller linearized fragments. The backbone can be separated away from any inserts cut out of it and the insert can be isolated and separated from any overhangs cut off of it via their different migration speeds. After running the gel for some duration of time, these differently sized pieces will be in different locations and can be cut out of the gel individually. The DNA can be extracted from the piece of gel. The last step is to assemble insert and backbone. Here, both digested DNA fragments are incubated together. The overhangs, which were generated earlier using restriction enzymes, enable scientists to join the DNA of interest with the vector ensuring compatibility between the sticky ends of the fragment and the vector. Ligase is added to link the two fragments together. This molecule is now known as recombinant DNA. Since the reaction will also contain byproducts such as incorrectly assembled or undigested plasmid molecules, the next step is to isolate a single correctly assembled recombinant molecule from the assembly reaction. To this end, bacteria, for example laboratory strains of E. coli, are commonly employed as host cells due to their ability to take up and replicate individual recombinant DNA molecules and produce substantial quantities of the cloned DNA fragment. To identify the cells that have successfully taken up the recombinant DNA, 
scientists employ selection markers, such as antibiotic resistance genes. Cells that have taken up a recombinant DNA harboring the resistance gene will survive and grow in the presence of a specific antibiotic, whereas non-transformed cells will perish. Because presence of the antibiotic resistance gene alone does not guarantee that the recombinant DNA molecule has been assembled as desired, scientists proceed to verify the presence and integrity of the cloned DNA fragment. Techniques such as polymerase chain reaction and DNA sequencing aid in ensuring accuracy. By comparing the sequence of the cloned fragment with known sequences, scientists can confirm the success of the cloning process. Molecular cloning stands as a powerful tool in the field of genetic research, allowing scientists to explore the complexities of genetics or unveil the mechanisms of diseases for groundbreaking progress in medicine and biotechnology. Check out this video here, might be interesting for you. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a like if the video was helpful to you. Thanks a lot.